Okay everyone, back with another update on the, the rocket stove here, rocket mass heater. Um, here's what we have on the agenda for this for this part of the video, um, or part of the series. I'm going to wrap up this section here, um, at least as far as, I'm not going to show you how I deal with the, the mortar and stuff in here because that's not really that, that relevant. You guys got the idea in my last video what needed to be done. Um, but I'm going to get this top bracket on, get the pellet feeder attached to it, um, and then I'm going to start working on basically what you see here. Okay, this is one of the key elements behind a, a rocket, mass heat, rocket mass heater or rocket stove. This is going to encase the riser, okay, um, which means it's going to need to be welded to the base here. And I'm going, it's obviously not big enough to go all the way around, so I got two pieces. I wish I had something, um, like a, a, oh, what the hell are they called? The slip roller. So that I could take some really thin gauge metal and, and roll a, a thing of, you know, roll a tube that would be perfect for this size. But I don't, so my partner brought me this chimney exhaust tube which should be perfectly fine um, not going to have any issues with burn through on it because all the ex excess temperature excessive temperature I should say is inside the riser which is all insulated with the fire brick this is essentially just a case because there's going to be some perlite put in between here and the riser to give it more insulation to ensure that the riser gets up to as hot of a temperature as it possibly can get so I'm going to set you guys on time-lapse mode. Uh, I'm going to try not to blab too much on this video and get to work. First things first is I'm going to grind this area down, this mortar that's on here, and put a strip across here, pull these fire bricks out, and lay a bead from here to here on the inside, and then from here to here on the outside. Um, and then on the top, I'm obviously just going to run a bead all the way across. So I'm going to be working on that. I'll show you what's what you know what, how everything pieces together after the time lapse video. Get some work done. So talk to you guys in a second. Okay everyone, um, as you saw in the time last video, I got the whole burn chamber on, um, the feeder on here as well. Um, I haven't started to do the surround of the, the, the heat riser yet, and I'm not going to just yet. I'll, I'll be right back to show you that, but what I wanted to show you is, is something that I did inside of here. I cut these bricks shorter. I've got to cut that top one a little bit shorter because it was something that I wasn't compensating for. Um, but basically, I'm going to try to cut these bricks fairly short. Um, what we're looking to possibly do is have some air intakes on the side so that we can put a door over the front of this. Um, 
I'll have to talk to my partner about that and see if that's the direction he wants to go. But what that will allow, allow us to do is to play with the air fuel mixture a little bit for our long term testing. So it's something that I have to consider. Also, I mean, you can see here, it sticks out. The barrel's going to stop right about here, or the compressor tank, whatever you want to call it, the cover. It's going to stop right about here. So this sticks out quite a ways. Um, I plan on removing these front feet and re readjusting one of these and doing a center mount over here so that it's a, a tripod type stand so it sits flush or sits on all three feet no matter what the situation is. Um, but I still don't want it to stick out a ton, okay? It's not going to look like it sticks out nearly as much once the cover is on, but it's something that, that I definitely want to address. So, anyway, um, I'll be right back. i got to go put my phone on charge and charge this up and upload some of these videos. In the meantime, I'm going to be out here working on getting this cover or the surround for the, the heat riser installed so that I can hopefully start filling this up with perlite tonight and figure out how much more perlite I'm going to need between here and here to finish that off. Um, it's going to be a little bit tricky because as this wraps around I'm going to have to notch it around here. So I've got to figure that out. Um, but I want my weld seams. What I'm going to attempt to do is, because these are heat pipes or chimney pipes, they latch together normally from here and I've got two of them so I'm going to try to use the two of them together and, and attach them the way, they're, the way they should and then just tack it all the way down because it's really thin metal just a bunch of small tacks so I'll turn my Everlast Power, um, Power iMig 200 down to its lowest setting and just keep welding it, welding it, welding it, welding it and same thing around the base so anyway that's where we're at I'll be right back talk to you guys in a second Hey everyone, okay, so I got a lot of this stuff wrapped up on the stove. I'm just coming out of the house. Look at this fucking mess. Somebody did this to my driveway. It's a crazy amount of snow and they just came through here with a plow and just made a big fucking mess. I'm gonna have to come out here tomorrow with a shovel and clean that up. That's terrible. Need to get a snow blower. Anyway, heading back into the shop here real quick to show you guys what was done while the phone was charging. And actually quite a bit. Okay, so here we go. I've got the the inner barrel on. The outer barrel will go over that. Uh, I don't know how well you can see that in there. Not very well at all. Um, nope, not very well at all. <laughs> um, I've got the perlite in there. I've got two bags. I'm about halfway up. So I'm going to need, I'm going to say three more bags just because this void was here and taking up space. So. I'm going to get three more bags of perlite, fill this all the way up, then I'm going to weld a cover over this area here to seal that up. Um, this is all welded in place. The welds look hideous. I'm welding paper thin steel to 16 gauge and I'm actually having some problems. It's really cold right now. Um, it's about 20 degrees here in my shop. And I'm having problems with the fan again because it's too cold and my, my power, uh, my Everlast welder. The fan in these things is not rated to be as cold as it is. So, and it's extremely cold right now. So, tomorrow morning I'm going to come out here. I'm going to break up some wood, the little bit of wood that I have. I'm going to fire up my barrel stove. I need to get it warm enough in here where I can finish this up because this is stupid already. Um, I need to get my welder. To the proper temperature that it's supposed to run at and stop playing around in here. Um, anyway, I've got this attached. I've got to finish welding along the bottom and like I said, fill this up with perlite all the way and then just however I got to piece this together if it's just a bunch of pieces or whatever, cap that off. 
Cosmetically, it's not very important. Oh, I gotta finish welding down this seam. I did the other side, but this one I stopped on because I was having those fan issues with the welder. So, anyway, this is welded on. That's dealt with. I didn't cut any of the fire bricks or mess with any of that. Um, I'll deal with that later. I think right now I'm just going to focus on getting this all sealed up, getting the cover on it, hooking up the exhaust for it, and then I can mess with this. Um, I may end up just firing this up and not ever touching this area until after the first burn in it so I can see how it works. I don't want to I don't want to finalize any part of this front section here the air intake until I know everything's working efficiently and properly cuz that's that's a bunch of work that I might end up having to cut off if something's wrong but I think it'll be fine but anyway I just wanted to show you guys that I'm freezing my ass off so I'm going inside the house anyways thanks for watching subscribe comment like check out the links in the description I'll have links to my machines as well as um, where you can buy these machines, I should say, on Amazon. If you guys buy them on Amazon, it does help me out. I'm not sponsored by Everlast. So, anyway, um, there'll also be the links to my Facebook page. Go like that, please. Follow me on Twitter if you use Twitter. And check out my website. All those links are in the description. So, thanks for watching. Talk to you guys later.